Unite the Right and Antifa are both dangerous, disturbing, and disgusting. So what's the difference? While the media categorizes one as bigoted and intolerant, it too often gives the other a pass or ignores it altogether. It's time for Final Thoughts. Over the weekend, a couple dozen members of the hate group Unite the Right, known for their racist, white supremacist, and neo-Nazi views, assembled in Washington, D.C. They were vastly outnumbered by what the media called counter-protesters. Among those in that group were some 200 self-described anti-fascists or Antifa, many of them wearing black masks. They not only confronted the white supremacists, but also threw eggs, water bottles, and shot fireworks at police officers. Listen, if you wear a mask, resort to violence, and shoot fireworks at people like Antifa did, you are not a counter-protester. You are a thug. And if the left wants to call out violence and hate and lawless bigotry, they shouldn't forget to include these so-called anti-fascists. Now, let me make this clear. The fact that white supremacists, no matter how small the group, still exist in 2018 is saddening, maddening, and disgusting. But despite what some in the media would have you believe, I've seen almost every problem prominent conservative, including the president, denounced the ugliness. And millions of hardworking and kind-hearted Trump supporters around this country have nothing to do with these people, what they did, what they stand for, or what they believe. And one more thing, conservatives and liberals alike have noted that Unite the Right organizer Jason Kessler was once an Obama supporter and active in the left-wing Occupy Wall Street movement. But guess that didn't fit the narrative, huh? So to all of you social justice warriors out there who have gone out of your way to pin the hate on conservatives, on Trump supporters, on Republicans, you should be ashamed of yourselves, particularly when we have made it crystal clear we do not support or associate with hate groups and white supremacists. It's this phony identity politics that lost you the election. The average Trump supporter is a hardworking American who believes in limited government, personal responsibility, a strong military, a strong border, American jobs, and America first. Not a Nazi or a white supremacist. The fact that some people can sit behind their keyboards and continue to demonize us as deplorable bigots, racists, and white nationalists might be a funny joke to them. It might make them feel big inside, but it's BS and you all know it. Conservatives and true patriots are disgusted by the white supremacists and have been vocal about it. But where are the Democrats calling out the violent left? We're waiting. Those are my final thoughts from LA. God bless and take care.